Welcome to worship and a special welcome to any guests that we may have joining us today. Um, thank you to those who are assisting with our worship, to our readers, greeters, ushers, and communion servers, um, to our sound and projection crew, to Crosswalk who is leading our music today, and to Pastor Steve who is our preacher this morning, and also to Deidre Klinert who will be providing our musical message. There are lots of announcements that you can find in your bulletin today, but I do want to highlight a few of them this morning. Um, first, we send condolences to the family and friends of Lois Nelson, who passed away on July 4th. Um, her visitation is this evening at Schoenberger Funeral Home from 5 to 8 p.m. And then uh, the visitation will continue here at Calvary tomorrow morning from 10 to 11, and the funeral service will be at 11. We also send condolences to the family of Milt Osnes. He was the father of Pam Hansen and Grandpa to Brent and Sarah Hansen, and he passed away last week as well. And then we send congratulations to Mike and Angie Schrader on the birth of their daughter, Hadley Faith, on June 6th. Um, there are still some sponsorships available through Common Hope, so if you have been thinking of sponsoring a child in Guatemala, um, this today is your last day to sign up. Um, you can find information on that in the fellowship hall. We have several fellowship events happening in the next few weeks. We'll have our pie and ice cream social happening on Thursday, July 20th from 4 to 7. Um, so you all are invited for barbecues, pie, and ice cream. And we're also looking for some folks who are willing to help us out with the serving and cleanup and that sort of thing. And we have a bright, bullet, bright poster board in the fellowship hall where you can sign up. Um, and this Thursday, we're having a ladies' night, so we're going to go over to Forest Edge Gallery near Virgus and have a wine-tasting event. Um, we'll be leaving from Calvary Carpooling at 4.30, and if you could RSVP with Jill Shipman or to call the church office, that would be helpful for us as we plan. And then finally, on the back side of your announcement page, 
We have a thank you from the Reverend Daniel Rift, who is the director of ELCA World Hunger and Disaster Appeal. And he writes to us, um, Dear Calvary Lutheran Church, thank you for your recent gift of $14,204.18, which was from our Lenten offering and our noisy offering. So it's given um, to ELCA World Hunger. With these gifts, you are providing education and advocacy, water and sanitation, livestock and agriculture, health care and microloans. With your gifts, you are making possible ministry and projects that are transformative, holistic, and integrated. With your gifts, you are working here and in 62 countries around the world. So, yeah, so thank you all for being generous. Let's have a moment to center our hearts and minds on God through our worship. You may stay seated this morning for our call to worship. Praise God in this holy sanctuary. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise God with trumpets, pipes, and cymbals. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise God everything that breathes. Praise the Lord. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name amen in the mercy of almighty god jesus christ was given to die for us and for his sake god forgives us all our sin as a called and ordained minister of the church of christ and by his authority i therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen as you're able, we would ask that you please rise and join us as we sing.
pray together. God in whom we praise, there is no place on earth or in heaven where our praise cannot reach you. Receive the offering of our hearts and join our voices in one hymn of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. The congregation may be seated. And our musical message this morning is I Need You, Lord, sung by Deidre Clinnert. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh, God, how I is more where grace is found is where you are where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me like to invite the kids to come up for the children's message. And we are going to have fun today, so come on up. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you divide up, so uh, let's have some kids on this side and some kids on this side. So Nicholas and Margaret, you want to just move over here? So we're going to have leaders on each side, and we're going to talk today about 
Any of you know what praise is? If I said to you, Nicholas, you are the best looking young man here in church today, and I love your shorts and your shirt, how they go together, and I think you're the best guy ever, that would be praise. You get it? So, we do that for God sometimes, don't we? We tell God how great God is. Say, praise the Lord. Say it with me. Praise the Lord. Can you say it loud? Praise the Lord. So, here's what we're... You think it's okay to praise God when you're happy? How about remember Pastor Cassie last week talked about happy faces and sad faces? What about when you're sad? Do you feel like praising God? Yeah, you know, I think that's okay. Sometimes we might not feel like it, but we do it anyway. So let's ask the grown-ups in the congregation, did any of you come here today with some joys in your heart? Raise your hand if you came with some joys in your heart. Any of you come with some sadness in your heart? Raise that. Okay, so all of us have some happy things and some sad things in our lives, but during the whole thing, we can praise God. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to teach, or maybe these people are going to teach us a Sunday school song. You know this song, most of you from Sunday school, and it involves some action. So now if you have a hard time standing up and sitting down, you don't have to do this, but you know the song? Praise you, the, you can help me, Russ, get the right key. You know this one? Okay, so this side will be the hallelujahs. And so when you sing, you stand up. So you guys... Follow Pastor Cassie. <laughs> He's looking at me. It was my birthday on Thursday, and to celebrate, I pulled a muscle in my leg. <laughs> She's had an injury. So when this side stands on the hallelujahs, everybody stands. When you're done singing, you sit down. And then when we sing the praise ye the Lord's, we stand and we're done singing. We sit down. So I'll lead on this side, and Pastor Cassie will lead on this side. You guys lead on this side. And you guys follow Pastor Cassie. You ready? So hallelujahs, stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. job, everybody. So we remember that in all things we can praise God, and we're going to pray about that right now. Will you repeat after me as we pray? Dear God, we praise you. We praise you when we're happy. We praise you when we're sad. We praise you because you made us. We praise you because you love us. Send us out to praise you always. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming to help your good leaders and good learners. We'll continue with the readings. All right, here's the microphone. The first lesson in Psalm 150, a reading from Psalms. Praise the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firement, firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. 
As you're able, <coughs> excuse me, as you're able, please rise and let us praise God by raising our voices and singing Kyrie Eleison. gospel lesson is from John chapter 4 verses 24 through 26 a reading from John God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth the woman the woman said to him I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ when he comes he will proclaim all things to us Jesus said to her I am he, the one who is speaking to you, the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the past five weeks, we've been walking through a series of psalms on Sunday mornings. And in that journey, we have been all over the emotional and spiritual map. During just the past three weeks, we've reflected on Psalm 13, which is a psalm of lament, Psalm 23, which is a psalm of trust, and Psalm 30, which is a psalm of thanks. And something that I've learned in this journey through the psalms is that each of these psalm types, lament and trust and thanks, come almost always from this context of feeling in the pit. They arise from hardship and they help to show that people of faith commonly experience the comforting presence of God when they are going through hard times and maybe especially when they are going through hard times. 
So Pastor Cassie and I use resources for worship planning that are really well put together and really insightful most of the time. And part of that resource is a suggested sermon title for a particular scripture. And as I looked at the suggested title for this week, uh, I saw Gifts for Praise. And I thought to myself, what is this? Psalm 150 is just pure, unadulterated, raw praise. Um, there's nothing here about gifts for praise. So what was someone thinking? But then looking back at where we have been over the past weeks has helped me to gain some perspective about this. We've looked at these forms of communication with God that come out of the pit. The Psalms of lament, Psalms of trust, Psalms of thanksgiving, and each one of these is really like a gift for praise, fuel for praise. Anybody watch the movie, what, The Water Boy? Tackling fuel. This is fuel for praise. Lament is this honest and raw communication with God that has no pretense about it at all. So lament is a reflection of this honesty before God that is grounded in relationship. And this honesty is indeed a gift for praise. Psalms of trust, which also arise from the depths, are a recognition that the one whose name we call is worthy of our complete trust, even when we question and when we complain. So we walk by faith, and faith is a gift for praise. Psalms of thanksgiving are so often expressions of gratitude for this reality that God does not leave us alone in the pits, but in fact, that God has the power and the will to turn things around. So gratitude is really a gift for praise. I'll take three little slices from last week's Psalm, Psalm 30, that show how this turnaround is expressed by the psalmists. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. And later on, weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. And still later, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken up my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. And then the psalm ends this way so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. So honesty, faith, and gratitude are all gifts for praise. Amid all of these expressions, praise keeps coming as the end product. I read a little bit this week about how the Psalms are structured in Scripture. And as it turns out, the book of Psalms is really divided into five smaller books, smaller divisions, each of which ends with a call to praise. And the entire, the entire book then concludes with, with um, five psalms of praise. Psalm 146 through so Psalm 150 are all psalms of praise. So it all comes back to this notion of giving praise in spite of every other circumstance. Everything that has come before brings us to praise, the good and the bad. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking about a, a song that the praise team sings often, Blessed Be Your Name. And it, it shows the same rhythm, the same understanding of how God speaks to us. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Praise fits in abundance and in the desert. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Praise fits in times of ease and in times of suffering. And it all comes back to praise. Listen to the refrain. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastor and writer Eugene Peterson 
is best known for his book, The Message, which is described as a, um, the Bible in contemporary language. And in looking at how the, the Psalms end with this blitz of praise, these remember I said these five Psalms of praise that end the book of Psalms, uh, this is what he says about this. This is not a word of praise slapped onto whatever mess we are in at the moment. This crafted conclusion of the Psalms tells us that our prayers are going to end in praise, but that it is also going to take a while. Don't rush it. It may take years, decades even, before certain prayers arrive at the Alleluia's. Not every prayer is capped off with praise. In fact, most prayers, if the Psalter is a true guide, are not. But prayer, a praying life, finally becomes praise. Prayer is always reaching toward praise and will finally arrive there. If we persist in prayer, laugh and cry, doubt and believe, struggle and dance, then struggle again, we will surely end up at Psalm 150 on our feet, applauding encore. One more thing about the Psalms, and this may be the most important thing that I want you to remember today, and that is that the Psalms are communal. They're communal works. They are created and meant to be used in a community of worshiping people. And the grammar of Psalm 150 is a great example of how this word comes to us. So there's a single Hebrew word that is translated as praise the Lord. Anyone know what that word is? You've heard it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is translated as praise the Lord. So hallelujah, I'll give you a grammar lesson here. Hallelujah is the plural imperative for the word praise, which means if I say hallelujah in Hebrew, I'm ordering all of you to give praise. And Yah is short for Yahweh, God. All of you praise God. All of you praise the Lord. So, so the flavor of this word, hallelujah, is something like a Southern Baptist preacher standing up on a Sunday morning and saying, all of y'all praise the Lord. We are being called into praise, not just as individuals, but as community of faith. People who are, you know, I notice these things people who are experiencing joy, people who are experiencing pain. Same people are putting up their hands. This is who we all are. This is who we are as community. Um, we are being called into praise as a community of faith. So how do, we, how do we pull that off? During the past week, we've lost two dear saints, Bob Moe and Lois Nelson. Uh, and you know, honestly, I don't feel much in the mood for praise. In fact, I'm much more in the mood for lament sometimes. But the thing about being God's people is that we are God's people together. In this community of faith, we dare to lament and we express doubt and faith practically in the same sentence. We struggle together to be faithful to the walk of discipleship uh, into which we are called, and we fail. We find ways to express gratitude even when gratitude is hard to feel. Yet in all of these hard places, we also share the good news that Jesus has come to be the focus of God's holy work in turning us back to praise, always turning us back to praise. So we shed tears and we shared together with Bob's family this past week, and we praised God for the gift of life and salvation. We will shed tears and share laughter with Lois's family this week, and again, we will praise God for the gift of salvation. So all of y'all lament with me and, and join me in trusting and thanking God for walking with us through the darkest valleys and in our joys. Let us join together in praising God with every instrument that we have. Let everything that lives praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Again, as you're able, please rise and join us as we sing. church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the mending of God's world. Humble God, lead your church in the way of service. Prosper the work of campus ministries and young adults in global mission as they raise up leaders to serve the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Cultivating God, bless and encourage all who work the land to feed your people. Give them joy in their vocation. Shower rain on crops and health on livestock. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you command peace to the nations. Give peaceful hearts and discerning minds to world leaders and citizens alike, that all who suffer violence and hunger come to know the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you bid the weary to come to you for rest. Renew energy for bone-tired people. Support our brothers and sisters who are burdened by grief, loneliness, and illness, especially the families of Bob Moe, Lois Nelson, and Milt Osnes. We also lift up in prayer those who are on our prayer list. Nancy Brandt, Shirley Bunker, Mary Eckhoff, Mitch Grothy, Connie Hansen, Roger Howgrude, Terry Karkula, Paul Cascatillo, Larry Lang, Bev Miller, Shirley Moe, Kurt Morkin, Shirley Norland, Ross Olson, Tiffany Ruiz, Wayne and Bobby Sachs, Marv Schmidt, Marcy Sunberg, Jan Anderson, Pastor Marilyn Breckenridge, Larry Hegley, Harper Haltman, Jennifer Jorgensen, Ellen Lenz, Barb Lovinson, Jake Marcus, Barbie Ruther, Loretta Sazma, Gerald Wegscheid, and Leona Whitmer. Lord, in your mercy. God of everything, you have compassion for all that you have made. Show our congregation what mercy looks like in our own community, that we may be faithful partners in your ministry. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. As members of God's household, I pray the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another at this time. As you are ready, I invite you to be seated. We will continue with the offering and also have an offering of music.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. As we come to the time of Holy Communion, I want you to know that all are welcome at the Lord's table. Uh, come and walk this baptismal journey with us along the way. Uh, we'll be serving communion by intinction this morning, which means you'll receive a piece of bread and you will hold that until the cup comes by and you'll dip in the cup. Uh, each chalice is split so the darker colored liquid is wine, lighter colored liquid is grape juice. If you need uh, gluten-free bread, that all, there also is a center section of each uh, tray that has gluten-free bread. So if you need that, just reach in and take that. If you're particularly sensitive to gluten, we do have a gluten-free chalice that you can use. Just come to this side of the congregation for communion and we will do that for you. Uh, all of us have forgotten and put that bread in our mouth. If you forget, don't worry, we'll gladly give you another piece. And if you take it out and try to dip it, we'll pull the cup away from you. Uh, <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> this, during this season of Pentecost, we invite you to remain standing for communion. So these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all is ready.
I invite you to stand as you're able for the blessing. Let us pray. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.